All right, we are at uh, section 28.6, the last section of the chapter. It's called the Hall Effect. We used to use the, what we called Hall Probes uh, quite a bit. Uh, if you recall from my, uh, for those of you that were in my uh, 24, 25, I had a little photo uh, of a uh, uh, two magnets, uh, one on a styrofoam cup, one on a tongue depressor, and uh, would actually use a Hall effect uh, probe, a Hall probe, to measure the magnetic field that was coming off those uh, those magnets. And this, is, so that's what we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss the Hall effect and uh, how you can measure uh, magnetic field uh, with the uh, with a Hall probe or using the Hall effect. Okay, let's look at this uh, this uh, upper right figure and let's read it. When I is in the uh, okay, you so basically you've got a a B field going. Uh, sort of into the page uh, from uh, it's kind of at an angle and you have a current coming out of the page at an angle uh, through this block uh, of conducting material so you have you have the magnetic field going this way you have the current in this way so positive uh, uh, the the uh, the force on um, a positive particle would be upward. Uh, if the positive particles are going this way, then the negative particles are going in the opposite direction. And you see the uh, the magnetic field, the uh, drift velocity of the negative particle. The uh, it would also be upward. So um, the uh, this is the uh, a hall. A Hall probe or a Hall effect. Uh, this is studying the Hall effect. Let's read the the bottom captions. Uh, so when the charge carriers are negative, the upper edge of the conductor becomes negatively charged, and C is at a lower electric potential than A. The charge carriers are no longer deflected when the edges become sufficiently charged that there is a balance between the electric force and the magnetic force. Now. Uh, so that's when we have negative charge carriers. Now, if you have positive charge carriers, when the charge carriers are positive, the upper edge of the conductor becomes positively charged and C is at a higher potential than A. So if you look at the little, the little boxes, you can see that here, uh, it's, um, the, the, uh, it's negative 1.5 volts and here it's positive 2.5 five volts now so how do we measure uh the magnetic field with this well uh the uh we have the uh q times v v drift times the b that's the uh that's the force q v v drift uh, is also equal to q8 q e uh the h the hall the hall uh, electric field uh, so uh, EH, you know, you can take the Q out of each of those. EH is equal to, uh, the electric field is equal to the drift velocity times the magnetic field. The voltage is equal to EH times D, where D is this, the, the height of the, uh, of this block, this conductor. Uh, you know, voltage is equal to E times distance. Um, and so we substitute this VB for the EH and you get the delta uh, VH is equal to VD B D where D is this distance again. Now the drift velocity is also I um, divided by NQ times the area. So if we substitute this for the VD and do a little manipulation here, uh, uh, we'll, you'll see that B in other words, we're taking the uh, VD and inverting it. This you have the INQA here, and times D that comes to the denominator when we put it out the other side with the delta V. So the magnetic field is uh, the number of charge carriers times the charge times the area times the current times the this distance. 
times delta VH. Uh, now the area is equal to T. Uh, T is this thickness uh, times D. So if we make that substitution for the TD for the area, we see that the Ds cancel and you, the B is equal to the number of charge, whoop, the number of charge carriers times the uh, charge times T, the thickness, divided by the current times delta VH. So that's uh, how we measure magnetic field using a Hall effect probe. Um, so that's the end of the chapter. That's the end of the, the Hall effect discussion. And uh, so we'll stop right here.